Hey everyone, welcome to a screenwriter's take. My name is Tony D and this is Joan of Arc. And today, my final word on Game of Thrones. I know, I know, uh, but I felt like my hot take on it, while fine, I really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty and uh, break down the final episode and for me, why it doesn't work. So, the problems with the final episode really stem from I mean, you can go all the way back to mid fourth season when the show ran out of books and it became very TV. Now, if you forgive that um, and say, well, you know, TV guys, they're not much in the way of layering with characters. They can only do so much. So much. They're, they're, they're simpler writers. They like everything to be wrapped up and neat. Okay. Um, that doesn't really explain, you know, five and six seasons and seven but definitely uh the start of this season was much stronger i mean the first two episodes were decent and and seemed like they were going somewhere um where they got into trouble and i said this before was the zombie episode the zombie episode was a huge problem because the first thing they did was they sacrificed apparently all the dothraki for that one shot which was a cool shot but the thing is they never explained how the Dothraki came back. Dothraki, Dothraki, whatever. They're dead. <laughs> They're dead to me. Um, but, uh, and then of course, the end of the zombie episode where basically the only people left are the main characters. And literally all the Unsullied and Dothraki are gone. Uh, they didn't address it. And they really needed to. And it would have been easy. It could have been as simple as, you know, the reinforcements are here. Uh, the, 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 uh, we'll have to pull our army from, from Dragon Rock or wherever, wherever they had armies. I mean, typically in a medieval society, they would have had other armies stationed in other places to keep things, right? To hold on to them because you can't just take over a castle and then leave it empty. Somebody will roll in and, and take it with their armies. So that was an easy fix. However, I think, you know, initially when I talked about it, with my hardcore fantasy friends, we were talking about how exciting it was that Daenerys had no army now and had to take King's Landing basically with just the dragons and a handful of Northmen, which was doable based on what we saw. Uh, based on what we saw one dragon do, certainly two dragons should have been able to take the city on their own. Um, but things kind of didn't go that way. And if we look at the last episode, it starts with the, the problem with, with, with bad movies and bad TV, one of the telltale signs is that characters are walking places. They're walking and they're walking and they're walking. And they're doing and walking the places we've already seen and they're doing things or talking about things we already know. So what's the opening scene of this? Uh, show. It's Tyrion walking through the ruins of King's Landing. We already know everybody's dead. Um, John walking with him. We already saw his reaction to all this death and destruction. Arya, who got on a horse and left, now is kind of still walking through the city or walking through part of it. It's not really clear. Um, you know, it's, it's all stuff we've seen. Okay. And you can say, well, this is a big emotional impact and we should see it again. Excuse me, Joe, take your butt somewhere. Um, and that's fine, I get it. Uh, I can indulge the show up to a point. And then comes Daenerys and her finally her big speech. And it seems like it's taking a long time just to even get to that speech. So she gives this big speech, how she's gonna conquer the world. And it's not clear if John understands it at all. Um, or even, I don't know if Tyrion speaks the language. No, I guess they established that he had started to learn it. So he knew what uh, Daenerys said. But yet in the later scene when he's prisoner, he doesn't just tell Jon, hey, look, she's going after Dorne. She's going after Winterfell. She's going after all these places. Now, Tyrion may not have understood that fully, you could say. Still, it's pretty clear to the audience that Dragon Lady is not going to stop, okay? 
and John's just basically kidding himself. After the speech, we get what? More walking around. So John's walking and walking and walking and walking. He walks up to the dragon, which again, cool scene. The dragon under a big pile of debris. That's cool. And he gets up. I thought, I thought, what the hell's happening? And then, oh, it's the dragon. It's cool, but who cares? Like, that wasn't a scene that furthered the narrative. It didn't mean anything. John and the dragon had already been together, hung out. John rode a dragon. He didn't ride that one, I don't think. Um, you know, unless it was revealed that maybe John, as a Targaryen, could control that dragon too, then that might have been a useful point of information. But ultimately, that wouldn't have mattered either uh, by what happened at the end. So eventually we get to John killing Daenerys, which is a good scene. Um, I like that scene. It was long overdue. She gets to touch the Iron Throne, doesn't sit in it. Great. Cool. Now it's John and the dragon. What's the dragon going to do? And I think this is where the TV people came in and said, ha ha, we're going to do something very clever that no one suspects. Rather than do uh, one of two things, either going with kind of what's been established and what you would expect characters to do, like a dragon, or what the fans, I think, would have loved which would have been the dragon fighting John. John and the dragon fighting it out, or John, you know, doing a dog whisperer thing and making the dragon his mount, like, you know, slapping him around and saying, no, down boy. Um, one of those two things. The dragon destroying the Iron Throne, you know, it's, in literature, dragons are supposed to be smart. In this show, it, that was not necessarily established, in my view. And if it was, I don't remember it. Um, you know, the dragons were kind of smart. I don't know if it was smart enough to go, this is the thing my master uh, destroyed my master. Her ambition destroyed her, and I'm going to kill it. I mean, it was symbolic. Certainly, it could have been that way uh, in the show if they had wanted that to work. I don't feel it really did. It was okay. It was more like, you know, a high schooler's version of what, what's cool. And that tends to be TV guys. They tend to want to simplify it. And um, after that, almost everything after that, to me, was a lot of walking around, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, wokeness. So we had this scene where it's all the lords and ladies, which... You know, in my view, a lot of those characters didn't act like people whose <laughs> capital and queen had been burned to the ground. Uh, the only one who had any kind of intensity is Sansa. The other guys, to me, look like they're half checked out. Half checked out, like, oh, let's go back and, you know, uh, 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 do our lord and lady things. No, things are on the line here. <laughs> the world's just been destroyed. Uh, can you be a little more intense? And they pushed very hard for Santa to be this, like, great queen, great negotiator, whatever. I get that. And her move to make the North independent, I think, is a valid one. I think that shows, you know, her making a clever deal. Um, however, her embarrassing her uncle, that was just posturing, in my view. That was just posturing on the producer's part to give you know, a little red meat to the woke fan saying, see, see a woman's in charge. See a woman's really doing this. You know, her uncle, the uncle character, uh, you know, he, he could have had something to say and his, even his speech seemed like a, oh, we need to, we need him to start a speech that'll never, he's never going to finish. And it felt like that, like it felt like a speech that you were never going to hear the end of, you know, there was nothing to it. He was just bloviating. Uh, <laughs> Joan is getting comfortable. Joan, relax. I'm trying to finish this. Anyhow, um, and picking a brand. Okay, so I talked to my nephew about this, who's uh, pretty up on the books, and uh, uh, he actually picked brand for his bracket, so he won. Kudos to you, Nick. 
Um, but uh, the thing is, Bran was established as this sort of druid, mysterious character who was going to go into the woods and like dissolve into a tree. And then he just shows up at King's Landing and like he knew the whole time he was going to be king, which in that case, why did all these people have to die, Bran? Um, if you know so much, can't, can't you tell people? Um, so it, I think it's inappropriate for a character like that to become king uh, for lots of reasons. Now, my nephew points out that since uh, Daenerys is dead, if you consider the Targaryen takeover in the last, next to the last episode valid and legal under medieval law, the next person for the Iron Throne is Jon, which makes sense to me. Uh, now that Jon killed his heir, could be contentious, but at the same time, thing of it is when that happened in medieval society it, it kind of happened all the time but if we overlook that and say well John's captured by the sullied and they're gonna kill him and they have to negotiate fine my nephew points out that the next person in line was technically Bran Stark because John Stowe is half Targaryen half Stark therefore the lineage would go to him rather than uh, uh, Gendry who I picked um, now they didn't do it that way in the lineage, which I think would have added something to the show. It would have made it more medieval instead of this weird scene where Sam Tarly, ne uh, Turley ne nearly invents democracy, which just felt like, what the hell are you doing here? Why are you doing that? Now that they laughed about it, fine. But, you know, really, when they ended up voting for a king, that's basically parliamentary democracy. And that is, first off, it's not Game of Thrones. It's, it's just not. It's not what has been established. You know, I get it. The show's over. We got to wrap it up. Um, but people still wheel and deal. And if these guys are so checked out, they barely care that Cersei is dead and King's Landing is burned to the ground, then certainly they'd be vying for the position in a more constructive way or to get, you know, in the good graces of the person who would get that position. I didn't see any of that. And... Um, so that whole scene was just so, it feels like it was just so Tyrion could have his big speech, so Sancha, Sansa could have her moment and embarrass her uncle, and then Bran, you know, gets to be the king, and then Tyrion, oh no, I'm gonna be the hand again. Um, another scene which was like, come on, let's move things along, is Tyrion moving the chairs. Now people said to me, well, that's symbolic. I get it. But, you know, that just is more evidence. There wasn't a lot to this episode. There wasn't, you know, there were revelations and payoffs, at least, in the episode before. Big fights, uh, you know. We get to see who Daenerys really is. We get to see the mountain and the hound go at it. Arya gets this moment where she finally turns her back on revenge. I mean, all that was great. Here, we don't get that. It's just, you know, biting biding the time until we can kill Daenerys and wrap things up in a nice neat bow. And this idea that we're going to take all the characters now and they're going to go in the corners of the universe is just saying, well, we're going to put these guys on a shelf and we're going to have a movie 10 years down the road, which to me, again, it's not, it, it's a, it's a financial decision on the part of the producers. I understand it. I don't think it's the best one in terms of, the characterization and what the payoffs could have been on the show. So we didn't get the uh, many-faced God guy showing up to, uh, I mean, I think he should have showed up to kill Arya. And whether or not Arya died or lived, I mean, she could have lived, she could have just beat him, right? Like he could just show up and go to stab her and she just whirls around and gets him first or somebody saves her, you know, would be a crime for a character whose female gets saved by somebody, you know? Um, you know, somebody said to me, I, I really wanted to see Tyrion kill Daenerys. That would have been surprising. Instead of having this long scene where he goes down into the basement and finds his brother's dead body, which seemed to overkill at that point. We had gotten the big scene with him and Jamie in the last episode. You know, he could surmise that Either they got away and he's never going to see him again or they died. I mean, either way. Um, 
I don't really think we needed that scene where he goes down there and then is crying, but, you know, I understand why they did it. Uh, it kind of wraps that up so he knows for sure. But, uh, again, it doesn't really give me any information. I already knew Jamie was dead and Cersei was dead. I already knew the Red Keep collapsed and this whole thing sort of failed. Um, we had a lot of, you know, Tyrion in jail and John in jail scenes. These are all slow scenes. Uh, this is like middle season scenes to me. These are not scenes for the climactic finale episode of this epic show. I wanted to see a dragon fight. I wanted to see John kill that dragon or make it his steed. Um, definitely wanted to see that. Or John dying would have been fantastic. John gets up on the dragon and they're fighting it out. And he just stabs it and they both plummet to their death. I mean, that would have been epic. There's a big explosion. <laughs> uh, you know, again, Arya fighting the many faced god guy. Um, you know, Sansa becoming queen. Yeah, I could see that. That was fine. I think Middle um, Littlefinger was really missing from these last few episodes. He really, really could have been around uh, to do stuff. And even, uh, uh, what's the name? Vares, Vars, Varys. I can't say his name. You know, the bald guy, the bald eunuch guy. You know, they killed him off and then, you know, so what? Just felt kind of overkill at that point. Uh, it wasn't super dramatic. It was and wasn't. And, you know, that guy could have been useful to have around, even at the end when people are vying. And Grey Worm just kind of goes his own way, you know, with his many, many sullied army, unsullied army, which, again, by the end of this episode, they had more guys than I think they started with the entire series. You know, that final scene with all the unsullied, there's a gazillion of them. You know, there, there should not have been that many. Just should not have been. And the Dothraki should have all been dead. Or there needed to be some explanation. So that that alone impacted the events enough that for me, these guys really needed to sit down and uh, think about the practical matters. And I think that's what some people are talking about. Not all people. I mean, look, just like Endgame, there was a lot of emotionally satisfying moments. But, you know, that's typical of Hollywood. They, they tend to focus on that and ignore the details. And when you do that, you know, you get out the door with the money <laughs> and the praise. But when the dust settles and they look back on it, it's like uh, the TV series Lost. And uh, when people, I think, they look back on Lost and they go, nah, that wasn't a good show. Because the way it ended, the way they just sort of teased and teased and teased and teased and teased and then the kind of show ended. Now, I'm not saying Game of Thrones is lost, but I'm saying it's in that vein of TV-ness that shouldn't have been. It should have been better. It should have been more epic. Uh, and I say that not as a fan who wanted to see a dragon fight, but as a screenwriter who wanted to see more things revealed in that final episode rather than just these wonderful montages of the characters going their separate ways. Now you tack that on to the end of the next to the last episode. Might have been okay if you'd cut out all the fat, but um, you know, you just had, you know, one less episode and the last one was two hours long, maybe. Um, but overall, you know, like I said, I stand by my review of giving it a four. It was merely kind of okay uh, ending. But, you know, they were never going to live up to seasons one to three and a half. I mean, those seasons are just incredible. And, and it's a tough act to follow. And, and, and again, it's not that nobody is, uh, it's not these guys aren't talented, the actors aren't good. It's just that the writing isn't there. The writing needs to be as good. And unfortunately, because of people's egos, because of, money because of other factors, fame, you know, the actors get more famous and doing more projects. It just ends up being a really, really big creative compromise in order to please a bunch of people who kind of don't matter because at the end of the day, it's all about your fans. It's all about you. Okay. 
So that's the end of Game of Thrones. My name is Tony D. Check me out on Patreon, uh, my comics on the web, Comic Factory, uh, where you can complain about my comics and tell me, tell me I don't know what I'm talking about and point out the same, same things I point out about Game of Thrones. And of course, Super Frat, uh, Joan of Arc and Tony saying goodbye. See you next time.